Long way reporting there. Now, Iran says it's ready to finalize a strategic partnership agreement with China. It reportedly includes billions of dollars worth of Chinese investment. That would give Iran a much-needed economic lifeline in the face of U.S. sanctions. China has not confirmed the details and would only say, quote, it stands ready to work with Iran to steadily advance cooperation. The partnership was first proposed by Chinese President Xi Jinping during a visit to Iran back in 2016. For more on the draft agreement, what it means for both countries, let me turn to Trita Parsi, Executive Vice President of the Quincy Institute right here in Washington. Trita, if this agreement is finalized and approved, would it be a game changer for Iran? Well, it would be a significant change for the region as a whole, granted that it is as far going as the public speculation has been so far. Reality is that we still do not know the final details of this agreement. But for Iran, who has not had a strategic partner of the size of China, uh, since 1979, this definitely is a significant change, but also a significant change that is not entirely supported by all political factions in Iran. There is a fear uh, that this could lead to Iran becoming a bit of a proxy of China. That may very well be an exaggerated estimation, but it, it is to say that there is also discomfort in some parts of Iran about the agreement. But again, it all comes down to what the final details are. What do you think um, where we are in this juncture? Is this agreement, again, if it's finalized, a result of the U.S. pulling out of JCPOA, reimposing sanctions, choking Iran's oil exports, its banking sector, threatening to punish any country does, that does any kind of business with Iran? Would we have been in this juncture if those things had not happened? Most likely, we would not. But I think it's also important to point out that this has certainly been accelerated by what Trump has been doing, but it started much earlier. Back in 1995, when the U.S. first started to impose major sanctions on Iran, there were commentary in the uh, public here in the United States, editorials in newspapers that warned that this path would eventually push Iran into the arms of China. Now, earlier on, when the Chinese suggested this agreement or the framework for this agreement, the Iranians were a bit hesitant. Uh, they were open to it, but it seems like they put it on pause. And what caused it to be unpaused is precisely what you pointed to. Trump's maximum pressure strategy, its effort to destabilize Iran and suffocate the country has left the Iranians with little choice but to seek a closer relationship with China. And what would that relationship mean for the United States? Well, the United States currently, in my estimation, is not playing a strategic game whatsoever in the Middle East. It is uh, it lacks the capability of being able to discern what are high priorities and what are low priorities. So right now it's throwing everything it has in order to suffocate and destabilize Iran without it even being able to articulate as to why that should be such a high American strategic objective. So I think what we're seeing is uh, a scenario in which the U.S.'s influence and uh, abilities in the region are shrinking because the U.S. is playing its card so badly. Having said that, I do believe that it does lie in the U.S.'s interest to have a significantly lower military presence in the region because its presence and its aim to dominate the region has backfired on the U.S. and has also ultimately, on balance, destabilized the region rather than actually stabilizing it. And Trita, since I have you, I have to ask you about these mysterious incidents of fires and explosions in Iran. We've seen them at a, at a missile facility, a power medical clinic. That attack was actually deadly at Natanz and now at a shipyard in Boucher today. What do you make of all this? Well, there's a story today in Yahoo that reveals that there was a major decision in 2018 by the Trump administration to allow the CIA to have far more leeway to engage in activities of this kind. Uh, these type of activities on the previous administrations would have to be approved by the White House. That is no longer the case, and the piece essentially indicated that what we're seeing happening in Iran, these mysterious fires and explosions, are the work of the CIA. And that, in my view, is the ultimate evidence that the logical and intended conclusion of the maximum pressure strategy that was designed by Bolton, Pompeo, Netanyahu, and MBS actually is war. And we're seeing that playing out in, our, uh, in front of us right now, because these type of attacks inside of Iran 
is at the end of the day a declaration of war. Wow. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Kuda Parsi, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.